Well, good morning, everyone. Yeah, I guess it's rolling here. Awesome. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for the 17th day of June, 2019. Well, today's the full moon, and uh, it's in Capricorn, so I'm doing the uh, uh, moon in Capricorn blog post right now. Uh, I've, I'm a little bit late. I was going to try and do it last night, but I was just too tired. Um, and I, I, so I started it and I didn't finish it. So I'm doing that now. Well, not now, but when I get done here, I'll do it. And I'll get that finished. And so uh, basically the gist of it is we're kind of, our, our structured and, and focus side is kind of at, at odds with our playtime side. So, you know, we'll see which wins out, but you know, who knows? Sometimes it's just nice to throw caution to the wind and, and go do what you want to do. But anyway, sometimes we got to pay the bills though. Anyhow, find a good balance there over the next few days. Um, let's see. I've got my pendulums here. I was uh, just, you know, doing some pendulum work this morning before I started this. And uh, just out of curiosity, I, I, I got three different pendulums out. I have a bunch of pendulums. I, I just, some of them are crystal. Some of them are, are uh, uh, metal. You know, it just, it just depends. I have a new one, which is really cool. It's, it's, it's a dual crystal one, which is really cool. But anyway, I, I, I got this one too. This is a, this is a 12 point cut and then it's got a 12 point cut on the top. Uh, this is a really cool one too. I like it. And then I, and then I took just a metal one, just a plain, you know, typical plum bob looking <laughs> metal one. And, uh, I asked the question if uh, if Donald was going to be impeached, and each one said no. Now, no goes this way, back and forth. Yes is this way. And it's true for any any pendulum I get. I check them each time. Uh, it might be different. Uh, you know, you can go sideways, you know, at angles and all of that. And you can decide what that means. But you have to decide for yourself. It's not like it's written in a book and this is how it works. It's not. You really have to check each pendulum, and theoretically, each one should function the same for, for each person. Uh, so if no is this way for you, it's going to always be. Uh, and so what I did is I asked the question, is Donald going to be impeached? And it's saying no. But will Donald resign? Oh, look at that. See, it changes, it changes direction, doesn't it? Is he going to resign for supposedly health reasons? Oh, interesting. Now watch what happens. I'm going to set this one down. With my new really cool one. <laughs> Will Donald be impeached? No. Will he resign? Watch it slow down. How about that? It agrees. This is what I've been getting lately. I just thought I'd show you. It's easy to take my word for things, isn't it? It's like, well, no, we don't want you to do that. We want, we want to show you, right? Will Donald be impeached? No. Will he resign? Yes. It's interesting because this particular pendulum, when it starts to change direction, it'll kind of go in a circle, you know, uh, and then and then it'll start doing this. Others, the other two, what they do. It's just going this way, right? It'll come to a stop. And it'll, it'll just come to a stop, and then it'll start doing this. But this one will actually do a circle. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't know why you would ever give an interview to George Stephanopoulos. He's, he, was, he, he worked for Clinton. 
He was the architect of Clinton's 92 campaign. Why would you ever do that? Do you think he's not going to ask questions that he needs to ask, that the world needs to hear answers to? Of course he is. And Donald just gave it to him on a silver platter. He didn't need to talk to Mueller, folks. Let's talk to George. That way, see, we don't have to worry about some attorney general hiding everything <laughs> or whatever it is he's doing. You know, not letting people see anything, not letting Congress see things. Yeah, well, we just needed to talk to George. No collusion. Lots of collusion. <laughs> so I've just been doing the pendulum lately. You know, the whole way through, uh, you know, <laughs> it's been consistent. And initially, I was afraid to look. I really was. Because I thought, oh, my God, <laughs> you know. But then I, I got brave, and I started looking. I started using the pendulum on it and asking the questions. And I have to tell you, every single time I get the same answer. I check it against lies, you know, and can't fool the pendulum. So, but we'll see. You never know. I just have to think that by the time it gets to the point of impeachment, I think that he'll quit because he can't have that happen. So, I just think it never should have happened to begin with. But that's just me. Anyhow. Well, today is the 17th, and so we're looking at an eight energy. So, you know, leadership skills and uh, harmony, but it's harmony that is, oh, and why it makes it leader, good for leadership skills is because we're basically able to consider the greater aspect of, of self, you know, the, the greater picture of things, which makes for a good leader who leads from a, a position of balance and not authoritarianism. So this is a good day for that, to explore that within, how we express leadership in our lives. But last week and for the last few weeks, we've really been talking about a transformation away from uh, illusory perception. You know, er everything here is perception based. We can talk about what the truth is, you know, and <laughs> can, we could all be wrong, you know. So, so it, it really is about how are we, uh, how are we perceiving everything? Are we perceiving it from the standpoint of uh, spirit, or are we allowing the ego to to guide all of that? And I think that we've seen a, a huge trend toward the ego, uh, and me, 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 and what's in it for me, and what can I get out of this? And I think we're seeing that playing out in our lives, you know, the. the greater, the country and around the world and all of that. We're seeing a lot of people in power that are doing that to people that are that are oppressing them and, and expecting everybody to live with less, you know, than what they should be able to live with. You know, we should all have access to work. We should all have access to health care. We should all have access to an education. And uh, we have to decide if we want our money spent on wars or that. And apparently, there are the powers that be want it all, all spent on conflict-oriented things, not anything that truly wants to elevate society, because then we all might for ourselves and throw the bums out, right, when we realize what they've been doing to us all these years. So that's why you have what you have now. And unfortunately, it, this is what we're seeing now is the last effort to get as much as they can before it all gets taken from them, because, you know, people are waking up. You know, this is the time of ascension. And what that means is that we're waking up to who we are as, as the creator personified into form. You know, we're just these little aspects of thought that, that, that become these, these bodies that we inhabit, you know, but, but it's the creator doing all of this. So in a sense, you know, we're both individual and the creator itself. Each one of us collectively. So. 
now we're just in this phase where we're kind of transitioning away from the whole us versus them mentality, seeing everyone as the other instead of as a brother or the other side of self. And, and now we're moving into the direction of realization and enlightenment, that we are this collective consciousness, that we are this unified presence or this unified consciousness that is the creator manifested into form. So how are we going to behave toward one another? Are we going to treat everybody as they're the enemy or that there's someone to fear? Or are we going to treat them as, as hey, that's just, an, that's, that's me over there. You know, just another aspect of me, you know, an aspect of you. Personally, I think that's just the better choice, but I think that, Humanity is still, you know, struggling with that truth, you know, so there you have a fundamental truth. We can live in this illusion of separation and division and listen to people who want to keep us that way and at each other's throats. Or we can just say we can reject all of that out of hand and say, well, I don't think so. I don't think we get anywhere when we do that. I don't think society is elevated when we do that. Oh, a few people are, as we're all beginning to find out. The corporations benefited from the tax breaks, but the average person didn't. Just another bill of goods we were sold. Of course, they tried to sell anyway. Most of us didn't believe it, but there were those that did. And, you know, some of them were happy with what they got. And some of them were like, what? <laughs> what just happened? But our faith in all this and this is what happens. So I think we're in that whole transition period right now. And at least the cards in the runes have been reflecting that, that we're trying to maybe move away from just being duped all the time and believing what these people tell us. And maybe we're going to start to research this for ourselves. And because it just doesn't ring true anymore, you know, and if you don't, if that doesn't give you pause, well, goodness, you know, it should. So. Anyhow, let's see what this week holds, though, and we'll take a look at the uh, cards, and then we'll either do three or four of them, and then we'll look at a rune from the Elder Futhark, and then I'll do, uh, I'll throw the four uh, geomancy uh, runes here, and we'll create a, a geomancy glyph and look at that and see what it uh, has to add to the whole equation for today. So let's count 13 and draw our first card. And if this is your first time here, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Click subscribe. I'd love you to do that and join our Tarot and Rune family as we get together here four days a week, Monday through Thursday, and take a look at what these influences have to say to us and how they can guide us and, and uh, maybe elevate our perception into something that's a little more lofty and less ego-minded. In any event, if, you, if you're back, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. <laughs> So anyhow, the first card we have, and I think that we, um, let me look at last week's because it might have been on Friday or Thursday that we drew this one. Yeah, the Six of Wands. So that was on Friday or Thursday. I keep saying Friday. That was on Thursday. We drew the Six of Wands. We're going to draw it again today. We see a uh, noble person, possibly a knight without his, you know, his uh, attire on, his battle attire on, but likely a prince or it doesn't look like a king really, but could be a prince coming through with his uh, white uh, horse there. It's covered in, uh, he's draped in, in a, a sort of a yellowish cloth. He's holding his own staff. In this case, it's considered a wand, the fire element, our will, our creativity, our passion, our manifestation here, we're manifesting success and victory. We have the help of friends. You see the five staffs behind them. They're all going in the same direction too. And in this case, the direction is toward the future. You see the wreath there on both his head and also attached to his staff. Six is about harmony. Uh, you have six and you have eight. Eight is the greater, uh, uh, a more intense version of that. But here we start to allow higher self to <clears throat> come in and, and we're aware of that. And it's the shared abundance with others that we're feeling here with this card. 
So again, you know, going in the same direction with others in a shared unified purpose. So again, it looks like we're going to continue that same type of theme that we've been exploring. Again, that's really what Ascension is all about. I mean, we can get into the whole nuts and bolts of where we're going to go next and all of that. But the truth of it all, it all begins with the awareness that we're one energy. And that, and that we are energy. The soul is not tangible in that regard. It's a vibration. All of this is a vibration. Vibrations slow down. They coalesce into form. So when we're our astral selves, you know, we're everywhere. When we're in non-physical. It's only when we become physical that things get slower and more dense. And that's where our focus gets stuck, you know, and it can either get stuck in spirit or it can get stuck in ego. So let's draw another card. Well, here we have the nine of wands. So another, another aspect of will here. Now, Even though you see the other eight staffs behind him, he's looking back at them. He's, he's been in battle. So he's either unsure of the support that he has. I'm going to set these cards down and take a look here in the, the, the tarot grimoire on this one. Um, nines are about completion. And so clearly the battle is over, but is it? Because maybe he's not quite sure. It's like if you look at the nine of, of swords, you kind of have like the, the you, you see the, the, the typical uh, uh, expression of it. You've got a person sitting in the bed holding their head and there's, there's swords everywhere. And it's considered the, the, not, the, the long, dark night of the soul moment, right? And then the ten of swords, he's on the ground and, and the swords are piercing the back and he's dead. So as you can go no further and now it's new beginnings. So that's actually a positive card. I know, but, but, but the nines, even though there's a sense of completion to them, there's, there's also a sense of, of, of exhaustion to it, I think, where you just, you're spent, you're just spent. And here, he's just really not sure. Look at him. Look at his eyes. He's got this furtive and untrusting uh, look back at, at the, at the uh, other, other staffs that are, that are there in back of him. But here he's standing in his own power, uh, strength through adversity. But, but basically what we're talking about here is maybe more a battle within rather than without. I think it's easy to struggle with our own will. You know, the, the, the dichotomy between one thing or another and then having to make the choice sometimes if we're if we're really willful we want it all and then at times it becomes all about us i don't have the sense though with this nine of wands that it's really and perhaps it belongs first We'll play around with the order here. Let's do another card, though, because so we really don't have any information because on the one hand, you know, we're going forward with other people. But then on the other hand, we're struggling within ourselves. So that's really been maybe metaphor for the experience that we've been having. There's a struggle in our own will to try to break free of the effects of other people and the influences of other people or the willful influences of other people. And that could be what the nine of wands is saying here. And then when he finally figures that out, he can move forward in victory with people. So I think I'm comfortable with the nine actually being first today. And then we'll move to the six. But I have a I have to wonder, is the next card going to actually appear either before the nine, really, or in between the nine and the six? Because right now, numerologically, we've still got a six energy, don't we? Nine and six is 15. One and five is six. So that's that's uh, still a six higher self energy where we're still moving forward in harmony with others and in shared purpose shared direction, 
shared experience, shared victory. So I have to wonder if that's really going to go clear at the end. So let's just put that there for now. But the, but the nine, you know, he's just not so sure, is he? Does he really have the support of other people? Are there wills? Is there will in back of him that's, that's trying to upend the whole situation? It doesn't feel like the situation devolved from the six to the nine. I think that we start at the nine. We're going to put the six after the nine, and then we're going to go to the ten, or rather, we're going to put the yeah the six after the nine, and then we're going to put the ten of pentacles after this after the after the six. We had this last week too. Here we see an older man with his dogs, all of his abundance around him. You see a castle. I need to put these down so I can show you. Of course, I'll do it backwards probably. Yes, I will. If you look right over here, there's a castle in the distance. You see an archway here. You see the coat of arms there, right up here. There's the coat of arms for the family. You see the younger people there. Now, it could be a son speaking to his mother, although her hair's not white enough, but it could be. Or it could be his wife. You see a doorway into new experiences with that archway, don't you? That's a running theme in tarot, by the way. Whether it's pillars, uh, it could be represented by two trees or, or two rock faces or something like that. But, it, but the idea of going through something into a new experience, that's what this is. This is transfer of legacy. And if you look, in a sense, what you have, the, uh, the pentacles are arranged in the pattern of the uh, tree of life. You start up here, the, the top three have to do with spirit. And then you're moving down into, through the abyss and into form down here. Okay. That's a Kabbalistic uh, deal. The tree of life, hermetic. Which the tarot largely is in, in its traditional form. I want to do one more card though, I think. Before we pull a rune, we're doing pretty well on time here. So we have new beginnings, and then we're and then a six. That's one, and six is seven. So balance, magic, divinity. Balancing shadow side with shadow side with self, or shadow side of self with spirit. Duh. <laughs> Oops. Maybe there's going to be one that's going to go in between the nine and the six. It looks like something had to have happened either before the nine. Now watch, we'll get like a two or something. Make a decision. Maybe we'll get a seven. Well, it's definitely change. Uh, yeah, okay, this is perfect. I'm glad I did this. All right, the Five of Cups. Again, the castle's off in the distance. You see some water there flowing. You see an arched bridge. You see three cups turned over and spilled. You see two behind him. He can't see any of it. He's, he's so caught up in his emotions that he just can't, he can't see what he still has left. In fact, I'm not even sure that he sees the cups that are overturned on the ground. But what we have here is uh, you've got some, some yellow sky there, so that's Will. I mean, these cards rarely have only the element that they represent. In this case, it's our emotion, the water element. So we've got fire, we've got earth with the pentacles and our practical matters, and then we've got, we've got you know, uh, also fire here represented. So you've got three, um, 
fire represented within this uh, uh, this water card or this emotions card. So what we have here, I think this happens first where we're just not sure. Do we have support? Do we not? Is it our perceptions that's caused, that are causing the problems? It's possible. So he's got to have a little bit of a change here, doesn't he? In how he sees things how he perceives things because he's perceiving them emotionally. He doesn't have any trust. You look at that nine of, of, of wands and it looks like he just doesn't have any trust, right? I mean, look at his face. He's just not so sure. So he re he's either figured out that he has more support than he realizes and that he's really getting in the way of that or something. But then, see, we come to the six of wands where... Now everyone's going in the same direction, shared purpose. We're on the same path. We're on the same, the same journey now. And when that happens, you see, we have the journey toward abundance and our legacy that's preserved. Okay? And we can begin anew in that shared purpose. So, yeah, I think I'm comfortable with that. So let's see if I can do this in my head. <laughs> So we said we had a seven and five is 12. That's three. That's manifestation. So again, manifesting abundance, manifesting legacy, manif manifesting shared experience. So let's get it. Let's, let's let these runes fall through my fingers here and we'll see if one will finally land in my hand. Here we go. Oh, not these. Uh, this is a, now there's three Norn runes, okay? There's three, the, when, when Odin hung upside down from the world tree for nine days to gain enlightenment, he lost an eye, all that stuff, right? It was the Norns of fate that gave him the runes. And so you're talking, and they're represented by the ninth, 10th, and 11th runes of the Elder Futhark, Hagalaz, Nathis, and Isa. Uh, Hagalaz is considered the rich, witch rune. It's the rune of the, rune of the past. Nothis is the rune of the future because it it, it 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 basically is describing the friction within to manifest, and then Isa is the static realm or the rune of the present moment. Um, but with Nothis, we're talking about the will to change and to manifest something different, the friction within to do that. And so I think we're going to put that one in the center. Between the Nine of Wands, we're going to read it this way, the Nine of Wands, where he's just not sure, and maybe it's his own perceptions, his own will, getting in the way of things, uh, affecting perception. And then we make a change here, where emotionally we've just decided well, this is just not working. Um, and so we've had to, to come to some other, other realization here. Uh, and then we take that inner friction to make that change, the nothies within to make that inner change. And then we can see then and move forward in shared abundance with others, leading to the legacy that we, you know, can then, it's a sustainable form of legacy instead of something that's just, just you know, uh, temporary. So in, in, the, in the case of uh, uh, the geomancy runes, it would be Fortuna Major over Fortuna Minor, you know. Fortuna Minor would be, you know, some, some temporary outward success, but the real inner success is found with Fortuna Major. We'll see what we pull here, though. And with this, I'll just share with you quickly, um, geomancy can be done in various ways. It can it can have to do with the ley lines and, and the earth. It can have to do with pendulum work. Uh, but it can also have to do with throwing little this or that down, peas or beans or pebbles or whatever. You can use little sticks. You can, And if you're just going to count them, if you have an even number, that results in two dots. If you have an odd number of them, that results in one. And then you just start writing them down. In this case, what I did is I, I have some staves that are about this long, only they don't roll right. So when I throw them down, sometimes they're on the side and I can't tell, okay, which one is a single dot or a double, right? So I just decided, since I make my own runes, I, I decided to do them in rune form. And so what you end up doing is you have, you put them in the order of fire, air, water, and earth. And this one is a water. And you can, or no, that's, that's air, actually. Is that air or is that earth? That's earth. I have to do things backwards here. And that's a single dot. And on the back, see, there's a dual dot. Okay? And eventually, you're going to, ultimately, when you do a geomancy reading, which I do once a month, you're going to create a shield chart, and they're going to look like this. You'll throw down the first four, 
It reads from right to left. You throw down the first four, create those, and the rest of it's created from the first four. But today we're just going to do one. And typically, because it's an earth element type of divination, it's a really old divination tool, what it's going to do is sort of give us the earth's perspective, our foundational perspective. It could be an outlier. It could be, hey, you know what? Don't forget this. But we'll just see what we throw. So, so we have a single dot for fire, and that goes at the top. Air is a single dot. And let's see, water, though, I think is going to be a dual dot. Yep. So here we're going to have some unstable energy today. It's going to be poor. Um, looks like, uh, I will draw this for you if I can find something to draw it on. So there it is. And if I can find something to draw with. I had my table somewhere else was using it there's one hopefully you can see this but poor uh it's a it's a it's a mars element but but what you're talking about or a mars influence but in a fire element but what you're talking about is a youthful energy that's that, that lacks impulse control it's a little bit of an unstable force the opposite of a puella which is a a young girl but again um Fortunate, but not too fortunate is the, is the, is the uh, interpretation of that one. And so she's a little bit unstable as well, even though her heart's typically in the right place. Uh, but here you have poor, which is, uh, again, the, the single dot is an active influence. The dual dot is a passive one. So let's, so we got three, three active influences here. So will getting in the way, uh, and, and then the dual one is like, who me, what, what I do, did I do something wrong? You know? You know, boys. I, my, I, I raised boys, so yeah, it is what it is. But I think that it influences here that there's just a little bit of instability going on, a little too much will, a little too much lack of impulse control, maybe, uh, maybe on all parts if these other uh, if these other eight wands or staffs are, are trying to illustrate other people, other other individual wills that are standing behind him that he doesn't trust anymore. Uh, maybe he should trust. Maybe maybe the change in, in perception allows him to trust more. Or it allows him to move in a different direction so that he can. Uh, either way, it, you, the, the real impetus behind all of this is not these for today. And that inner friction to manifest something different. And in this case, it, it's it's a it's a again a move towards shared abundance and shared experience that then increases our legacy, doesn't it? Into a sustainable place, not one that is, you know, so flighty and, and out there in left field that we can't really trust it. So well, groovy. Not bad for a Monday. Well, again, this is the full moon, so a little crazy time. It went full, I think it won something this morning or something. So if you're going to go out tonight, uh, I was out last night, got some really great pictures. Um, one of them is actually uh, going to be the picture for today's uh, blog post, the Capricorn moon blog post over at uh, stepping aside at i'm stepping aside.com that's the blog i write so I'd, I'd love you to go check that out um i did another thing uh, this weekend was it or friday i'm not sure it has to do with uh boundaries and it part of the title was and when men get too close uh what it's like for survivors what it's like for anybody really but what it's like for survivors when men get too close um Survivors deal with any number of, of, uh, uh, of different kinds of PTSD. Um, when, if you are abused as a child, if you're you know, sexually assaulted uh, at any time in your life, it doesn't make any difference. You're sexually harassed, whatever it is. It strikes fear in women that, that, that's just, and I'm, and I'm assuming in men as well, uh, but I can only talk for women. Um, it strikes the fear in us that is so palpable that we can't function uh, and it's not about 
you know, what the guy, but I, but I didn't mean anything. I didn't, I'm not trying, I'm not doing that. Well, that may be true. It isn't about them. It's about, it's about that automatic response that happens within a survivor. Uh, it can be very stressful in a marriage. Uh, my husband used to walk up to me uh, in the kitchen when I'm washing dishes and he just put his arms around me and I would freeze. Now, did he do anything wrong? Oh, no, mm -mm, not at all. It's just being loving. And so the conversation had to happen and he had to get it within his heart that this is not about him. He had to know that. And I will tell you, that takes time for your partner to understand that the normal thing you do to express love in a relationship might have to be modified a little bit. Like, let me know you're there first. He had to walk around and let me know he was there. And then once I saw him, no problem. But if you pin me against something, that's a problem. I'm a black belt. I'm going to respond. It's not going to be pretty, folks, but I'm liable to do something. So you see how innocent things can be blown out of proportion because they can't, uh, because people can't understand what happens to us inside. And then we feel massive amounts of guilt. And so maybe we don't tell anybody and we go through it alone. So you see, you see the mess it can be. So I wrote about it anyway. So if you want to check that out, uh, feel free to do that. I'd like you to do that, actually. Just so folks understand uh, that this is a real thing, okay? This is a real thing. And um, folks that have, are survivors just need some extra compassion and just a little more, you know, awareness, you know, that, hey, okay, that person's there, and, and I know that, and that's okay. So this never goes away. I will tell you that no matter how we, how much we heal. And I will tell you, I've healed an amazing amount, but no matter how much you heal, it's still there. So anyhow, check that out if you want to. And uh, hopefully if you're a survivor, it tells you that there's someone else who understands, but if you're too triggered to read it, don't just walk away from it. Okay. I understand. Trust me, I understand. So anyhow, we'll see you tomorrow though. So anyhow, <laughs> I got a little upset there. I'm sorry. So we'll see you tomorrow. You be good to yourself. Be good to one another and blessed be.